we've looked at the BIBO stability. Now we'll look at the zero input stability analysis for a SISO LTI continuous system. And it turns out to be uh, convenient uh, to represent it using the state space. And if you remember that, that's going to be x dot, where x is actually a vector, uh, equals ax plus bu, where we use the in command input plus fw, where f and w are both vectors, and f is the, sorry, and, and w is a disturbance, and y dot, uh, which is a, uh, also going to be the vector over here is called as Cx uh, plus du. I'm sorry, this, should, this is going to be a single output, so we don't have that. It's a, a scalar uh, plus Ew. And I'm not going to draw those vectors anymore because it's a, a bit complicated to, to draw. Um, now, what we have is that we have zero input, and also we're going to have a zero disturbance. So this term goes away, uh, the input is zero, so u equals zero, that term goes away, and we care, uh, and we're looking at basically of the state evolution of uh, x, so we here this goes away, this goes away, so y is just given by uh, c times x, and so all it all depends on what's happening to x over time. So let's focus on that, we're going to write down as x dot equals ax, where again a and x are uh, uh, ax, uh, our, uh, a is a matrix, I'm sorry, and x is the vector. So to study what it's going to look like, let's take the Laplace transform, and just like you can take the Laplace transform of, uh, of scalars, you can take the Laplace transform of vectors as well, and this will be given by s times x of s uh, minus x0 equals a x of s. We just take the Laplace transform of both sides, and so we see right away that x of s can be written as, you can rewrite this as uh, s i minus a inverse x zero. And i, we need this i here, i is the identity matrix, which is just one, one, one down the diagonals. That's the identity matrix, because we are subtracting the matrix from, a, well, from s, s is a, is a, is a, is a constant, uh, well, it's the parameter but it's uh, a, a scalar parameter. So we need to multiply the i to get the right value over here. And we can rewrite this uh, over here, the inverse in terms of the cofactors. And so if you're familiar with the algebra, this can be written as the transpose of the uh, cofactors of SI minus A. So it's capital C represents the cofactors of SI minus A uh, transpose over the uh, SI minus A, where this is the vertical line denotes the determinant, so that's the determinant. So um, if you look at this, we have basically a, two different things, and oh, sorry, x0. So we have over here the ratio of two things, and the numerator is a matrix whose elements are polynomials in S, and this is a denominator who, which is also polynomial in S. Polynomial in S. And it turns out that the if we expand this using partial fraction expansions and for the whole system to be stable, that means every element has got to be stable, the roots of this equation over here uh, si minus a the, uh, uh, should be all in the left half plane. And so uh, si minus a equals zero should be in the left half plane. So this turns out to be nothing more than the eigenvalues of a. So what is a? Well, you go back over here. a is just this term right here. That's a. So when you look at uh, the state space representation, we can immediately focus on the eigenvalues of A. And if the eigenvalues of A are all in the left half plane, uh, and if they're complex, that the real part is in the left half plane, then it turns out to be the, that the system is zero input stable, and also as it happens, BIBO stable under some mild conditions. So 
uh, it turns out that knowing the eigenvalues of this matrix over here tells us how the system is going to evolve. And again, for those of you who are familiar with linear algebra, uh, this is not at all surprising because the uh, the matrix power of the, the, the continued evolution of A uh, of X depends on A multiplying X each time. So basically we can think of the gradient of X x dot being given by a and if those if the gradient has any positive elements in it then those elements of a are going to diverge and the only way we can make sure that it's going to converge is that every element of uh, the gradient is going to converge and that and and that is represented essentially by the eigenvalues of a so uh, this uh, understanding this requires a bit of linear algebra which uh, i won't have uh, time to go to over here, but uh, for those of you who are familiar with this, uh, this is a pretty straightforward observation. Now, knowing this, that the uh, that the eigenvalues need to be in the left half plane, or equivalently, the denominator uh, the, the denominator of G S, which is uh, N S. So let me draw this properly. Uh, so remember that either eigenvalues of A should be uh, all less than zero in the, less, in the left half plane, or if GS is the transfer function of the system, which is NS, the numerator with the DS, then we want all the roots of DS to be in the left half plane. What this really means is that we, if we have the ability to control DS or to control A equivalently, we should make sure that we're placing them in the uh, uh, we make sure that the roots are being placed in the left half plane, and this is called pole placement. And this is a very important control technique. Again, uh, I won't have time to go into this in uh, in, in any detail, but uh, the idea here is that we want to always place the poles on the left half plane so that the control system evolution is always going to return back to the uh, desired values. So if you go back to our desired goal, what we're saying over here is that when we have a, any kind of a uh, disturbance which moves the system away from its set point over here, then we would like the uh, system to be such that the, the control to be such that it returns the system to the equilibrium point as it does over here. And it does this if the roots uh, of the denominator uh, are in the left half plane or eigenvalues uh, eigenvalues of uh, determinant si minus a uh, eigenvalues of a given by si minus a equals zero are in the left half plane. So this allows us to circle back to what we said in the beginning which is how do we know if the system is going to be stable? Well, the system is going to be stable when we have these conditions. And essentially what this requires us to do is to compute the, the uh, either the Laplace transform of the uh, transfer function or uh, in the form of numerator or denominator or to compute the eigenvalues of the state evolution equation. 